In the 1930s, we saw rise to power a lot of demagogues, uh, Hitler, Mussolini, Mussolini was already in power since the 20s, Franco in Spain, and a lot of lesser and less known imitators of theirs in Central and Eastern Europe, most of which was under re regimes of the extreme right. And I think there's something that all of these folks have in common, which is that they tend to rise to power at a time when there's a lot of economic distress. In the 1930s, it was the terrible toll of the Great Depression. Today, we know that you know, the bottom 50 or 60 percent of the American population have since the 1970s been seeing real wages corrected for inflation decline. Jobs are less and less secure. So one thing that happens in a time like this is the demagogues come to power with certain messages in common. And you know, I'm talking about the 1930s, but see how much of it echoes today. One is, place your trust in me, a strong man. Don't worry about the details. I'll fix it right. when I get to power. Uh, another is to blame everything on some outgroup. Yeah. You know, in the 1930s, it was most famously the Jews who were the fault of, you know, the cause of everybody's ills. Today, it's Mexicans, Muslims, Syrian refugees, immigrants to Europe, whatever. A third thing, I think, is to base your appeal, if you're going to school in demagoguery, mm -hmm. so to speak, to base your appeal on evoking the glories of your nation in the past. And I think there's one more similarity between the 1930s and today, which is that for all of these demagogues. One appeal of the great yesterday, so to speak, is that it was a time when women knew their place. They didn't run for president, uh, they were in the home, their role was to be wives, mothers, sexual objects, and that was it. They were not uppity. They didn't take jobs away from men. Women knew their place. And that is part of the glorious past that all of these demagogues consciously or unconsciously evoke. Thank you.